Hi everyone. I'm Tracy. Al. <laughs> Carol. <laughs> and we are a very exhausted by Outlander Purgatory. Dot com. We are very punchy tonight. And we're we both talked about popping our collars. Yes, we did days. not plan this. We did not plan this. I know. This is like, I, my house is so cold because, you know, God forbid it would actually like warm up at my house at the end of May, but whatever. Um, so I wore this, like, this is my coat and I still have it on. I, that's me. I have, look. I know. Me. I know. Look at this. Oh yes. my God. We totally did not coordinate this. Oh my gosh. Tracy, last week. They must have thought I was the biggest idiot when you go, you said something about like, oh, we're in sleeveless because it's warm here in New Jersey. And I go, yeah, well, I said, it's not as, it's, it's not as warm here because you're an hour north of me. Like I must have sounded, I meant to say like, well, I'm on the coast, so it's cooler where I am, but I'm also an hour south of her. I might have just edited that part out of No, don't. I just don't want to sound like a complete idiot that people are like, um, you're south, it should be warmer. Um, no. It's all good. Um, so, all right. So, what are you drinking out of that nice glass? That maybe we'll be seeing if we're going back to Scotland soon. After an episode like this, you gotta get the job done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I went for one of my favorites with the French name, the Clos de Bois Chardonnay, and it's just right here on the desk in front of me. So, it's all good. No, oh. I shouldn't even be drinking. Um, so why shouldn't you be drinking, Carol? Oh my God, I knew you were going to go there. Hello, <laughs> hello. Do you not walk through a door when it is open for you? Yes, I am, you I do. Am, I, that was just like one of those things you say. I'm not getting into detail. Um, last week, I think I said I had a little procedure or something. Well, this week I had full on some surgery on Tuesday. So um, yeah, probably shouldn't be drinking, but it's calming my nerves. Oh, but okay. let's just say, I'm not getting into detail, but it was woman surgery. So, and after surgery, as we all know, sometimes it was, it was womb related. And sometimes um, you get a little um, blown up with air from the um, uh, anesthesia. And let's just say that I might as well be five months pregnant, okay? Walking around in like a poncho, okay? Yeah, I'm not kidding. So this episode was really interesting for me to watch so i'm gonna say what did you say that you were like claire and who else all rolled into one i was louis and claire all rolled into one i don't want to go into any more detail than that though that's okay. all I, okay. all i can tell you is that it's a very wombrific episode <laughs> and i'm very wombrific right now okay t m i okay so before we get into all of it um we do want to announce that um, we had so much fun when we did the That's the Normal Hang Outlander show um, a couple, like a month and a half ago. Then so we're doing it again! Woohoo! Monday night. Monday night, May 23rd, 7 o'clock. If they'll have us. <laughs> oh, they'll have us. And it's going to be Everybody good. Everybody said I didn't say too much, so I, have, I guess I have to say more this time. I think this time we may just be like, you know what? We don't care that we talk with each other, over each other, talk, deal with it. Talk over each other, number one. And number two, though, it's, I think for me it's just, sometimes it just depends. I try really hard to stay awake. <laughs> well, it might have also been an episode where, like you said last week, as I was editing last week's episode, I was like, my God, Carol didn't say two words. I feel like I talked the whole time. But then you said at the end, like, it was just an episode that you had nothing to say. I texted you before we even did it, and I said, I'm warning you right now, I don't have a lot to say for this episode. I just, I, there are Last some episodes, episode. there are some episodes like the one we're about to discuss <laughs> that I've got so much to say. <laughs> so, like, that might be a, a good omen for um, for Monday. I think we'll, 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 I think we'll have more to say. Um, yes. More to say. Yes. For that, for that on Monday. Much, so, most to say. You know, go onto Twitter or the website or the That's Normal site and get the link for how to. Um, yes, I haven't posted it. yet. I'm going to wait and I'm going to do that tomorrow, which is, um, will be a few days well, in advance. It's not really Saturday or Sunday when you're actually watching this. It's earlier than that. But, you know, it's uh, if you're watching this Sunday, it's tomorrow. If you're watching it Saturday, because maybe I'll have it ready. 
it's two days from now. Okay. If you're watching it Tuesday, you're out of luck and you have to, oh my God. to watch it. Okay. Now, now you're talking about me and editing. Hello. Okay, you guys. Well, we knew it was coming. We knew episode 207 entitled Faith was coming. Now, for all you non book readers, you're like, I don't know what that's about. Is it like Faith Belie, like the Journey song? Is it like Faith, like Hope and Faith, like that, that show with Kelly Ripa and that other chick from Murphy Brown that was what we used to be on? But the book readers were like, yeah, we know what it's about, and just like have box tissues ready, okay? Okay. Oh my God, so many. I should post that picture that I took for you. Um, but I am going to call this, instead of Faith, I am going to call it Katrina Balfe's um, Emmy Reel. Oh my God, so, uh, I, that's one of my notes. <laughs> um, that is seriously one of my notes. Emmy Reel oh, right oh. there. Dear, dear Katrina, congratulations on your Emmy for the Where's My Baby scene. <laughs> oh, I was just like, I, 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 I couldn't even, I was reclined. Wait, who says that? What movie is that from? Where's My Baby? Where's My Baby? Like every, besides every Lifetime TV movie ever. Or besides the dingo ate my baby. <laughs> Maybe the dingo ate your baby. <laughs> no, there's some other one. I don't know, I'll think of it, but like... All right, we get it, it. we get okay. it, get it, because okay. Tracy, this stool is already too hard <laughs> to be sitting on. I am in, like, oh. Okay. okay. Writer is Tony Graffia, director is Mateen, who we don't know how to say, but like... Tracy, that was terrible. I know, I always say it. it's. I don't know how to say his last name, sorry, and I get yelled at when I butcher French, so... Well, I'm going to, when I know. see it pop up on the screen, because I have it going right here, I'm going to say it. Um, Not that I'm going to be able to pronounce it either. We're sorry. Okay. So, we, I'm all ready for the Easter egg, Katrine, right? Is it, it's, Hussein? Hussein? Oh, we're probably bashing, like, totally not it bashing. It begins with, with H, and I got the, I got the first name right, I think, my team. Okay, all right, all right, okay. Um, do you want to talk about the Easter egg that wasn't really, or should I? Okay, okay. So, this week, Dinah Gabaldon posted, no. There was oh. a, it's an article about Diana Gabaldon, which, P.S., I do not think, I think that was kind of taken out of context. She mentioned it in a cute little way, and it, they took it, and it was like the headline, Diana Gabaldon says Outlander's jumping the shark this week. And I'm like, what? And I read it, and I'm like, okay, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. And nothing against, I don't even remember what site I read it on. It's it was probably on a few. Um, and nothing against them. You know, they saw it, they posted it, whatever. But... I, well, after I read it, I was like, okay, she's just saying like, ooh, the fans aren't going to like this. I, I took it to me, what she was going to say, one thing in the episode. So I'm going into this episode going, what's it going to be? And I was thinking maybe it was that. I mean, because it's different. You know what I mean? I just figured it later that it's not this episode, whatever it is, like maybe episode eight. Oh, I thought, she, I thought she said it was this one. No, 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 no. Or she like said afterwards, it's not this episode. Oh, because I thought you had said it was something from later in this episode. All right, we'll get to no, it. No, 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 no. We should yeah. do a whole video just on that brouhaha. Because so there's Claire and Bree sitting there, like, in the library, and they're reading these books about all the birds, the birds, the birds. Bird imagery was strong in this episode. Oh, it was so lovely. I loved it. I loved it. I don't know I about love, you. I love, 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 love every second. Well, let me, can I just do my, like, sort of stream of consciousness as I'm watching the Easter egg? And I'm always, like, typing, you know, when I, well, I, I wasn't even doing that the first time I watched it, but I was like, okay, here comes the Easter egg. And you're, you're all prepped to, like, think hard about, like, the symbolism or what it means or whatever. So I'm like, the first time I'm watching it, remember I watched it straight through. I'm like, okay, books. Yeah, I'm going to have to, like, I'm going to have to freeze frame to, like, get the titles of all of these books, um, you know, for when we did Screen And then then you start thinking, like, wait a minute. These are, like, actual books. They're not written in, like, the handwritten, um, you know, scripty script from last week's Murtaugh number line thing. Um, they're actual books. And that, that that's an actual table. And, 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 oh, my God, we're back in the future. It's brave. <laughs> and then, and then you see this over-the-shoulder shot, because you because you realize what's happening is that this isn't an Easter egg. This is the opening shot of the show, which they've never done before. Then you see an over-the-shoulder shot, 
and it's a child's hand and it's red hair. And you are like, holy shit. You're like, here it comes, here it comes. Well, it's all like happening so fast, you don't even have time to think here it comes. Because there it's there. It's Claire and it's Brianna. And I loved it like I can't even express to you. I just, I like, I just want to like take it home and marry it, even though it would be big and but whatever. Um, I loved, I loved every single second of it. Did you notice this would mean nothing to any of you, but Carol might meet, might um, laugh that um, Claire was wearing this like really sort of orange quasi Aunt Marie lipstick. Oh my did God. Did you write that down? Not only, <laughs> yes. Not only did I notice the lipstick, but, but it, the with nails. The, the blue dress and the nails were, were they, it wasn't, it was like a coral. Oh my God. It was, it was very matchy matchy, the nails it, and the lipstick. And it was so like, I don't want to say Jackie O, but it really was. Yes, it was. It was very so, like true to the time period. It was 1954 yes. in yes. Boston. And they're at like the library or something. And Brie must be very into birds because she's like got a whole tip. Either maybe she has like a report on birds or something. Oh, um, that Brie. <laughs> and she's got bird books all over the table. And they're like, look at this, look at this, look at this. And then Claire's like, oh, mommy was in Scotland once long time. And then that was just fab. It was just fabulous. It was fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. And then you see a heron above her. And then all of a sudden, we're back in France, where since nothing good can ever happen in France, Claire took the miscarriage right there in front of us. <laughs> um, which, which isn't funny, but like, but again, like this whole episode, this. This episode, I mean, we didn't really, like, do our, like, general, like, did we like it? Did we? I mean, I loved this episode. Loved it. It was it was back to, like, old school with a K, Outlander. Oh, where, my God. Like, really cool images, really cool, like, shots. Um, writing is spot on. Claire was badass without being annoying. It was all good. All good. Um, I can't wait for Tom to watch oh, this. Oh, Tom hasn't episode. seen it yet? Uh, no, he was away and just got home tonight. But this weekend, I don't think we're going to... Oh, we can watch it on Stars Play, but I can't watch it live. I'm not going to be able to live tweet unless I try and like hit play right as it's starting. Why? Because you don't have cable? Like, no. Uh, not not paid ca Not um, like the pay channels. If we're away. Have. If we're away in PA. Oh, 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 okay. Um, okay, so anyway, so you see the overhead shot. Uh, I'm sorry. You, so Monsieur Ferre is, like, doing some sort of procedure on Claire down there. Um, Mother Hildegard is all... <laughs> In the nether region. <laughs> Wasn't that wide-angle shot... I'm just going there in this episode, you guys. Just forgive me. I am. I don't see how we can talk about this without going in there. So here I go. Like, legs spread. That At the end of the scene, that wide-angle shot, that leg, they're all standing there, and she's laying on the table, and the leg overhead spread, shot. and the blood, the overhead shot. and I'm like, so great. this is beautiful in its horror. I, I can't even... No, I know exactly what you mean. It was exactly absolutely... It was... Just absolutely beautiful. The camera work where it's like kind of slow motion and fuzzy and um, the, all, like it's it's like it's like how Clara would see everything in this sort of haze of pain and sorry pain and agony and death that she's going through right now. Um, it was so great. It was so well done. It was so well done. So well done. Um, and then you see, then you see a bird again, and then, then I think you see the overhead shot of Claire. Um, and you know, it's just not good. You know, it's not good. You know what's so funny is that I have it right here, and I should be hitting play. Um, don't mind me, you guys, but like I said, I really have to keep hydrated. Um, I'm going to be real classy and put ice in my wine. <laughs> um, that's classy. Um, classy. So, okay. Then... Then some time has gone by and Claire is in sort of like this little like area of the ward, but she's all like sort of, she's got like the nice bed. 
Um, and like the, like, cur- not curtains, but like the drapes on the bed or whatever it's called. She's got the nice bed. She's got the nice bed. She's got the good accommodation. Yeah, but did you notice that, like, Did you notice at the hospital that the bed was spectacular, but then the two, like, stone walls on either side of it, it was really cool. I know. It was like this little, just, like, away area that they could just sort of put her. It rivaled the wall behind the couch in the King's Speech. Yes, agreed. Agreed. Um, Thank you. So the only weird thing about this little setup is that they've got, like, this really tall, like, po- not a podium, but, like, a, a tall, you know, display thing. Really tall and thin with this really tall Virgin Mary statue. And it's like placed like right next to her bed. And like, I mean, you know, you as a parent of kids would be like, you know, Keelan, Ian, like take that thing off that table because you're totally going to break it. Like, you just know where that's going. Let's just say when it did, I was like, could someone have moved that? (laughs) I know. It's like stuck right there. But okay. And I thought that that statue looked kind of modern. Like, that our grandparents would have had statues like that. Um, I didn't even, I didn't think along those lines, but I really did think it was neat. But I think I passed something that I wanted to say, which was when she was going through the whole, uh, the haze, you know? The haze was very, um, it wasn't, didn't seem so much from her point of view. I expected to be seeing, like, stuff, like, floating. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just, I didn't, I didn't, it was really well done, but it wasn't what I was expecting from reading the book and being in her mind and uh, people coming and going and this and that. And, you know, I thought it was, I liked it. I thought it was like saying it was neat the way it was neat. It it was a different, a different point of view. It was a different angle and a different way of looking at it, looking at things, people coming to her. And yeah. Right. I mean, I felt like it was all like, if you're all drugged up and you're not really recognizing faces, you're just seeing shapes of people coming and going and word and things and stuff. Right. Um, And Mother Hildegard's there all the time, like holding her hand. And how much do you love Mother Hildegard? Oh my God. Love her. Um, Love, love, love. So, okay. So, so, okay, this. I don't want any water. I... Yeah, 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 yeah. Are we going to listen to it or are we going like, to talk about it? Absolutely. <laughs> I just, I, I'm at the wrong spot because I yeah. thought that was where she starts yelling, Where's my baby? <laughs> Where's my baby? So the baby, so Mother Hildegard tells her that the baby was born dead. Um, I forget if this is the part where she, oh, oh, I know what it was. Um, you just want to smack, like, you know, like, none in training. That's all like, oh, the virgin will comfort you. She too lost the child. Or was that like, you know, I think that was the, I think that was the nun in training and not Mother Hildegard. I think Mother Hildegard is probably too smart to say that to Claire at this point. Yeah. Yeah, she's like, she didn't get smacked. Um, Why am I hearing reverb from your computer? I like, I'm hearing, I'm hearing me on your computer. Like, when people call Howard Stern. <laughs> <laughs> Turn on your radio! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I think I just hurt myself so bad. I can't <laughs> I'm just going to clutch myself. Okay, well, if, like, you know. Oh, there she I'm, is. I, was, <laughs> I was going to say something gross, but then I won't. Uh, <laughs> if it starts to be like the end of last week's episode, we'll call to this. <laughs> I, we might have to hit pause for that. <laughs> um, okay. So anyway, so yeah, Claire knocks over the statue. She's like, "Where's my baby?" Um, I still have to dig. Up. I think if I just if I just like search "Where's my baby" on YouTube, I don't want to know what's gonna come up. <laughs> dingo ate your baby. <laughs> Um, All right, now she, she gets to the sick part, and she's got the fever. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Mother Hildegard baptized the baby um, and named her Faith, even though she's not supposed to do it. But she broke the rules just this one time for Claire. Yes. And I did you like that the, they did it out of sequence, that they did it like this, and then they show her sick, but then toward the end they show her with the baby, and that sort of from yes, in between yes. two that was, Yes, it was really well constructed, the whole episode. Yes. Oh, and, and that Louise was there. We might have to do this one a little out of order. 
But like, we'll get to that because I, I love that too. Okay. So yeah, so they bring in the priest for last rites. Clearly, Claire is not doing good. Yeah, they're um, all like, um, we just have to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mother Hildegard's like, not like you're really sick or anything, Claire, but you know, like, it's just, rules. <laughs> nothing, nothing to see here. No. <laughs> hospital rules gotta do it you know god makes us and all but like no don't like take this as a sign that you're gonna be dead in about two seconds no 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 no, no. No. No, not at all and i and i also (laughs) wanted to make mention of she's been so stressed out since they got to france that like that (laughs) where's my baby was like all of it just coming out it was so great oh my god she's been she's been like holding down the fort like Jamie's running off here and running off there and she's been like holding down the fort and like then this happens and now she's just it's all coming out you know what I mean I really felt that I think it was about a lot more than just the baby in this situation it was just everything um so her sins are all she has left do you want to know something do you want to know something so tonight um I'm at my daughter's recital and um my friend is sitting <clears throat> to me and she is an Outlander fan. She has not read the books, but she loves the show. And I said to her, Oh my God, wait till you, till you see. She goes really intense. I said, Oh yes. She says, well, after last week when we left it the way it was with Jamie fighting blackjack and Claire sitting there, she goes, this is very profound. Are you ready? Tracy, you ready? You guys ready for this? And I had to keep a straight poker face because she hasn't seen this episode yet. She goes, it's like, she has nothing left. She's like, she's got nothing left. And butter when sins. she, no, no, <laughs> I'm just saying. When she Claire, said butter sins. I would die said, on the floor. When, I didn't really think of it that way. She's got <laughs> nothing left. To me, well, you got Fergus, you got the pretty damn nice house and <laughs> go to spectacular wardrobe. Yeah, she's on loan. So, like, when she said, my sins are all I have left, I had already seen that. But when my friend Pam said, she's got nothing, she's like, she's got nothing left, I was like, okay, anyway. She'd have gone, butter sins. <laughs> Except, <laughs> except <her> sins. <laughs> like, in church, lady voice? <laughs> well, except her sins. <laughs> Wasn't that special? <laughs> Okay, we have to laugh, you guys. Otherwise, we cry. Tracy um, and I and our family, we laugh at like at like funerals and viewings and stuff because yeah. it's just in our blood because it gets us through. So we have to. Right. Um, I that too. My God. right, you I too. Have a so I have to tell you guys that I need that dog. I need that dog. Oh, I thought you said doll. I was like, Papa Jamie, you've already got him. I think I just heard myself. I need Bouton. 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 She's like, get up there, Bouton. Get up with that. I love that dog. I know. That dog is adorable and so great and so, like, good at his job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So it's nighttime, and Claire's like, ugh. And all of a sudden, um, you hear, like, the, the Star Wars hero music, and in comes Luke Skywalker. Here to rescue the princess. Oh no, it's Master Raymond. Just dressed oh. in Luke Skywalker's cloak. I know, right? Like, but like younger Luke Skywalker. Like, before he. Master what? Raymond is younger Luke Skywalker? Oh no, what? not here. I mean, the cloak. Wasn't the cloak sort of younger Luke Skywalker cloak? No, I think that's once he's a Jedi, he has that cloak. Oh, like, right. I think I'm... he has the cloak on um, when he comes to rescue Han Solo. Um, I'm thinking from, of the brown thing from, that he wandered around the desert in. <clears throat> what? What? I mean, it's really like a monk, too. It's kind of like one of those. Yes, kind of yes, yes. Things, but, um, Maybe I'm thinking of those little dudes. And Anyway. Can, let's oh, keep... I know what you mean. No, no, no. Like the sand people. Is, is it yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. sand people. It's the yes. Jawas. The yes. Jawas. The yes. ones that go, hey, Thank you. You're not taking those droids. They don't belong to you. You've already done this in a video. Please. <laughs> you get it called Third Sister Jill and the two of you can banter. Okay, so, so Master Raymond comes along and he's like, we got to get this out. He knows that there's placenta still in the womb. At this point, I was clutching, clutching, okay? Mm-hmm. 
So there she is. I mean, too, by the way, because Claire told us in the narration where she was like, uh, 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 by the way, I had my center. Okay. You have to answer a question for me. What? And this is one of those things that like, you got to kind of go there. Um, and I'm trying to remember from, from reading the book, I remember being a little confused as to what exactly that Master Raymond was up to. Yeah, I don't know that it was so clear either. I think well, maybe, and I kind of like that addition, honestly, but, because but, Master Raymond just put his hand, in the book, Master Raymond just like puts his hand everywhere, puts the it up book, her hoo and In she the feels book, better. I think there's some McGuffs. I think he's, <laughs> he's like, he's, he's, it was a lot more erotic yes. in the book. Yes. Now yes. I know you, non-book readers are going <laughs> <laughs> she was in a haze she was dying you guys dying and hence the in last walk, rights. what hence the last rites yes hence hence those oh nothing to see here last rites so <laughs> in walks master raymond like dun, 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 dun. he came out of the ceiling <laughs> Star Wars music. What? Yeah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, but then he came out of the ceiling like Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> and was like, and next thing you know, he's like, <laughs> radio token. <laughs> <laughs> no, they made it a lot clearer what the hell is going on with, the, with all the handsing. <laughs> because in the book, it is a little bit like, Master Raymond, are you saving me or how you feel? Oh, there was a lot more than just a feel me. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, so in the show, they basically show you, okay, Master Raymond is, um, he's aware of these things, and he knows, he must have heard through the grapevine that she's dying, and he knows that that placenta is still in there, and that I he's got to get that. it out. What does he have, like x-rays? No, but come on, no. Know everything? No, he it's knows. Magic. When when she started bleeding all over the place and, and was going into labor and was, I was like, placenta brevia, whatever, however you pronounce it. So, I mean, it's he <clears throat> probably figured that that's probably what it was. When you have that much of a fever going on after giving birth, there's still stuff in there. Look, Carol, I watched Call the Midwife. I know these things. Either okay. it's preeclampsia or it's stuck placenta. Spitzball, spitzball. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. I can diagnose these okay. at like, you know, okay. 20 paces. And it's probably like previa. I don't know what I said. Anyway, so so Master Raymond hears that she's dying and he's like, oh. And he goes and start. he sees that belly, like mine. And he's like, oh yeah, there's something in there. I got to get in there. Well, so he reaches in and he gets it out, right? But what didn't make sense to me was... <laughs> you guys, I don't know what we're talking about. Did you just snark your wand? Oh, now I'm going to... Now go make me laugh so hard because now my mascara is going to rock. No, okay, keep going. I'm, just, okay. I'm wondering if you're going to say what I what I well in the in say. the move in the in the movie in the show he like reaches in and he and he pulls it out but while he's doing that he's yelling at her call to him call to him so she starts yelling but it's while she's like sort of delivering the at the the afterbirth the the, the rest of the placenta so the thing is is that he wants her. In the book, I kind of remember this, and this is what I don't think the way they shot it, the way they had her yelling like she was didn't really. I, I'm going there. Get ready because I'm going there. I was under the impression that he. Oh God! If if I'm wrong, and this is gross, I'm sorry. No, I sort of know what you're going to say. I was under the impression that he was trying to. Bring Can I her, have a try? If it's bring, hard bring her to the big, so that she would contract and it would push it out. That's what I thought. In the but book, then in, or but in then the in the show, this is in the book. <clears throat> but in the show, he's well, okay. Put it this way: 
if she's going, why is he telling her to call to him? I thought that. I thought he wanted her to picture Jamie to think Jamie. Because that would heal her. See, I, I guess I'm wrong. No, I, I get it. I mean, I think in the book, I feel like it was one of these sort of more mystical things that like, yes, you know, he, he wanted her to, he, he was trying to, um, you know, um, cure her almost. Right. But he, but he also wanted, he knew that she like part of being cured for her was not only physical, but it was emotional. And to make that connection with Jamie that hadn't been there or that she had sort of cut off mentally. Like she was holding that in. Um, to, to, that, that, that was part of this whole, you know, exorcism for lack of a better word. Um, but I don't know that in the book it's explicitly talked about that like half the sense is still in there. I don't think it is. I think it's it, just it like. It is not. It is right. not. When I saw the show, I was like, oh, now I get it. I have to go back and read what I blogged because I don't remember what I thought at the time. But it was more, like I said, it was more erotic. Yes. Agreed. agreed. In the book, he was. Um, okay. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Um, and, and it wasn't um, so any kind of self-gratification on his part. It was nothing like that. That's why I thought he was telling her to call to Jamie, so that she would like have Jamie in her mind. You know what I mean? That too. Right. I, I took it as he knew. Well, well it's diff different with the TV. I think, I think with the TV version, it was just like, this is going to really hurt. Call to Jamie. Like, call, like get, your get your mind off it as much as anything, but also reestablish that connection. I think in the book, it was just, it was more focused on reestablish that connection. Um, but in any case, it was effective. My question, well, first of all, they had more bird imagery and it started making me think of like Crane's Mirror. Remember that episode where there was a lot of bird imagery in there too? And like making connections back to like Claire on the brink or whatever. But my real question is, so, okay, Master Raymond goes in, pulls it out, and then he hears, you know, Assistant Nun coming, and he runs away. What does he do with the placenta? Because when he comes back out after she goes away, he's all like, all right, well, you know, I got to skedaddle because they're going to, like, throw my ass in jail. So and I was like, where'd you put that, Raymond? Some people. <clears throat> some disappear. Some cultures. Ew. A little salt, a little pepper. Ew. Ew. And yeah. Raymond, Raymond seems like that would be, you. that would be, even for somebody who, who would want to do that, I don't think that they would, that would be like the equivalent of like having something in the refrigerator too long. Ew. I think it was a magic trick. I mean, you just like, Oh, it did, like, went, like if a magician would make something disappear with a with a thick of fire, like, he, I'll, like I'll tell you what he did. I can't believe you don't know what. Bag Bhutan bag. <laughs> 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 Woo. Oh Bhutan! <laughs> now get up on the bed. <laughs> I like that he called Bhutan little dog. If we can't have wee dog, then we'll then I'll take Master Raymond's little dog. I thought the exact same thing. I said, oh my God, at least I got, you know, hello, little dog, whatever yeah. he said. Yeah. All right. Oh, anyway, I have something to say now. We've, we've spent a lot of time with Master Raymond, but that was a great scene. Claire so, comes home. Claire, well, wait. Well, we found out that um, she's feeling better, but we find out Jamie's in the Bastille. And in French, they say Bastille. With Bastille. like a lot of other junk after it. And Claire, we find out. And we find out Claire is pissed. <laughs> oh my! Claire's pissed. <gasps> um. So yes, he and he's there. Well, Jamie is in the Bastille at the King's pleasure, which means like who knows when the hell he's going to get out. And Blackjack Randall, like I guess the 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 ambassador to France, <clears throat> was all like, yeah, he needs to recover in England. So yeah. he's back in England. So, Jesus. foiled again. Um, so, everyone's really bummed. So, Clara goes home. Now, Claire's like, oh, so he lived. So, Frank lived. 
but I don't think anyone mentioned to Claire the kind of injury that Black Jack <laughs> Randall sustained in this duel. Um, yes, I agree with you. I don't think she gets that either. Uh, as my son used to say when he was wee, uh, there's a problem with his family of jewels. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say, like, like this episode was so great, but there was a lot of narration that did not need to be there. And that I just put, I have my notes, like, must we have these bits of narration? Frank's safe. We get it. Like, I, like. Yeah, because you'd be in the middle of it, you'd really be into it, and all of a sudden you'd hear the talking. <laughs> yeah, and you, and you were like, "Shut up, Shut, Shut up!" Shut up! With the more, but I would say half the time in the in this episode, the narration cut it, cut it, cut it. Okay, cut it. So now, one thing you need to realize is that weeks go by in the hospital. She's in the hospital for weeks and weeks and weeks. That my she first, told us that she told us that. Yes, I but did, my first viewing, I, I forgot about that. I bed for weeks. For the first viewing, I forgot about that because why? that's why I said to you, like, oh, my God, like, you know, she's going to Louis the next day. Doesn't he notice that, like, her JJ is all bloody and shit? <laughs> if it was the next day. <laughs> he doesn't notice, like, little bits of placenta lying around. <laughs> Oh my god. So that's normal girls know totally when to like loop us in for episodes because <laughs> <laughs> last time wait, last time what which one was it? It was um it was about oh it was about um it was like another like just disgusting thing that like only we could talk about. Oh yeah, it was about the pooping. Oh pooping, yeah. yeah, yeah. Those um, my Outlander purgatories so girls are talk about anything. <laughs> And now it's bits, bits of placenta on the JJ. Okay. So anyway, so weeks go by. Fergus finally comes together. Fergus is probably like, oh, yeah, I suppose I should go get my, my lady. Um, and they bring her home. And this is one of, like, my favorite scenes of the whole episode. When she comes home. Downton Abbey? Very Downton Abbey. I was going to say the same thing. All the servants lined up. They're all trying to be stoic and brave. And she's walking through, and then Suzette just can't do it, and she's all weepy and stuff. And then she gets to uh, Mac. What is it, Mac? Stop. What? Stop. What? Stop. What? I've got a few things to say right there. About Suzette? I know it doesn't really matter, but you can't give the woman something, not a crumb. She's like all, talk about stoic and all. And poor Suzette is like is like showing her affection and and you know and she's just nothing. Oh, I don't think she. I didn't take it like that. I just I thought she was trying to keep a stiff upper lip because if she didn't, she would like lose her shares all over the place. I um I, I didn't see that. I don't think Suzette means a whole lot. <laughs> and I, I half expected her to reach in her pocket and pull out a hanky. <laughs> Suzette. Then this, Suzette. <laughs> then this, I'm back. Keep going. On to Magnus. Um, but the Magnus thing was so, like, when he just, wait, 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 what did I even say? Um, when, I forget what he says, like, you know, we were, we're glad to have you home. And she, like, sort of touches him like this, and then she grabs his hand, and she just says, thank you. Uh, I was like, Claire, all is forgiven. That will melt Tom's heart. That will melt Tom. Tom. Oh, no. Oh, no. Tom is going to be just as annoyed as I was at, <laughs> at, at treating Suzette like the hired hell. I don't think he, I don't think she did, though. Oh, I disagree. Tracy, that woman cried at her, and she kept right. She didn't crack a smile. It was almost like Suzette was crying a little annoyed. She didn't, she didn't grab her hand and say, I know, nothing. She was like, oh, Suzette, get off me. All right, so it was so let them eat. <laughs> Here's okay. Suzette. I think I have a tasty cake in my <laughs> in my handbag. Um, okay, so she goes in. Then Fergus is brought. To, uh, Fergus, like with her, like you know, you can just so tell that Fergus is like, my lord is not here, so I am going to be the man of the house, and I'm going to take care of my lady. Right. And it's so adorable. I could just, like, spit. Um, 
And so he's brushing her hair, and she's like, thank you, Fergus. And he goes, turns around, and he sees the bottle. Um, hang on a minute. I can't believe you, of all people. I really thought I could count on you for this one. What? <laughs> Weren't, oh. you a little, <laughs> Weren't you a little bit like... What do you mean, like... Get that brush out of your hair. Get that brush away from her hair. You can't brush her hair. Get She's got curly hair. hair. No, not the brush. You don't brush Claire's hair. You don't brush curly hair. That's so funny. I didn't. Even I was sitting there like cracking up. Like Tracy must be dying. Like, <gasps> don't get the brush away from my hair. It's but curly. See, I don't think Claire's hair is not that curly. Claire's hair is wavy, and that's a big difference. My hair does not. I do not put a brush in my hair at all. I put a brush Ever. in my hair when I Ever. blow it dry in the morning. Like, just to sort of lift it and blow yeah. the crown. Yes. That a brush never touches the side. Never. Never. Ever, 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 ever. I am the same way. I do not brush my hair when it's curly. And I was just like, oh, Tracy's got to be dying. But I, I hang on a sec because I just want to read what I had. Um, totally get the physical pain Claire's in. Wish Fergus would brush my hair like that. And no, then right? I but he can't because it's curly and I just washed it. <laughs> just come near my hair with that brush. That's what Put I that brush me. away, Fergus. Um, Keep going. So, okay. So he sees the bottles on the dresser. Can you tell like him standing, a, by the way? Say what? Can you tell him standing now? I've totally changed. Oh, uh, you can't deal with the seat so anymore? Look, does it look the same? Do I look yes, right? it does. Um, so Fergus, like, has a little bit of PTSD. Is all like, yeah, now I'm going to... Bye-bye, my lady. I can't, I can't deal with it. So... Slow down, because I have a few things to say. Where are you? Okay. Now, so Claire's wandering around the room. All right. She sees the Apostle Spoons. Yeah. She opens those up. She's like, ugh. Closes them, throws them under the couch. And then, like, goes off to cry somewhere, but not in her room. Like, some okay. other place. She closes the spoons and dumps them under the, <laughs> under the bed or whatever. And I'm like, ease up, girl. You might need those spoons again. And Jenny's going to whip your ass if you mess up those spoons. Don't beat up the spoons. They didn't do anything to you. All I could think of was um, a fish called Wanda when he's like, she whipped your ass real good. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like thinking to myself, oh, my God, like, easy with the spoons, honey. Yeah, yeah, she treated the spoons very harshly. The spoons never did anything to her. Like right, that. right. Okay. And I have something to say about Fergus. Well, well there, there's a lot to say about this. But about, about Fergus's location. <laughs> oh, like under the stairs, you mean? Like Harry Potter? <laughs> <laughs> like, Fergus is in the attic. Huge, huge house. Like 16 serpents meeting us. At the front door, like Downton Abbey, right? It's, it's, I don't want to talk at the same time. It's a huge house. <clears throat> There's a million rooms, a million bedrooms. And Fergus is like in the storage room <laughs> in the attic, like flowers in the attic, children. It's totally like, did you ever read or see A Little Princess? It's like after The Little Princess like goes from being like rich to poor and they, they like throw her up in the attic. Bedroom. Well, I'm just garret. thinking. I'm thinking of those those Dollinger, whatever their name was, kids and flowers in the attic. Flowers oh, in the yeah. attic. Like this kid, this huge house, and they can't find the kid a bedroom. He's got to sleep up in the storage room. There's know, boxes right. everywhere. All yeah, right, go. Is very hard, hard. So okay, so Claire like goes off somewhere, and she's like in some hallway crying, and then she hears like, oh, no, no, Michelle, no, please. Oh, so sad. I know. I know. I know. Um, so she goes, and Fergus, Ferg, you know, Fergus is having a nightmare, and Fergus spills his guts. I kind of wondered if he gave up the goods a little too readily. Um, I can't imagine that Fergus would be all like, you know, okay, well, I'll tell you everything. Like, he, like, he's ashamed of it, you know? I know, but you know what? I think that just by him going and getting her um, <clears throat> and, asking her, to, from, from and asking her to come home, he was ready. I think he was, he kept it in too long, and he knew he's blaming himself, and he knows that Jamie's off in the Bastille, and, and he's like, this is all my fault. And I think that just the mere asking her to come back, 
shows that he was ready to spill it. So oh, he, has a night, okay. he has a night that. She goes in and he just had a nightmare and he wakes up and he's all, so maybe it was just pouring out of him at that point. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I was a little surprised that he, you know, was so willing to like say everything that happened. Um, I was surprised that he said, I have a talent for stealing and I couldn't resist. Oh, that didn't, I didn't surprise, that didn't surprise me. I mean, yes, he does. <laughs> um, so let's talk through this a little bit. So, and we talked a lot, we talked some about this last week, about the, the implications for all of this. And now that we've actually seen what happened and can compare it to the book version a little bit, um, and I'm tempted to not even do a spoiler alert because there, I don't really, I don't really have, it, it's, it's just bad any way you look at it. And last week, if you didn't watch last week, um, what we said was, for whatever reason, what happens, I mean, clearly it's awful, it's horrible, but we didn't, we didn't remember having the visceral reaction to it of Blackjack is a monster in the book as we did in the TV show. Um, and personally, I think it's because, you know, Tobias, it's all Tobias. Tobias up to this point has created this really layered character where... He's, even in his evilness, he's interesting to me. And now, the fact that he's just, like, some, you know, random child molester makes me, like, go away. Um, go away. And I will say this. And, I mean, again, this is so not, like, making things right or better. But I will say that the big difference in the book is that... Um, <clears throat> and it's all, again, it's awful any way you slice it. But in the book, Fergus kind of knew what he was getting into. It had happened to Fergus before, I think. Yes. I'm not saying Fergus, that that makes it okay. I mean, we all know Fergus grew up in a whorehouse, right? Okay. So he mostly just, like, stole stuff, whatever. But, you know, he was, like, every once in a while, like, in, in the, and this is another book. What he explains yeah. is, you know, there's, there's, a, there's other houses of ill repute for those who are so inclined for that kind of business. But every once in a while, Adam Elise would get somebody interested, and Fergus would be like, okay, I'm going to get paid. Sure, why not? But, like, the, the, the impression you got was that, you know, only certain acts were committed, and he was kind of on board with that, and that in this instance, oh. that wasn't what was going to happen, and he said, you know, please don't, don't know. And yeah, so it doesn't make Blackjack any better. The only thing it does maybe is make it a little less like random, you know, oh, well, I was expecting, you know, whatever I was expecting, but like, this looks good to me. All right. Boom, 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 boom. Because I don't know that it was quite that like psychotically violent um in the okay. book i need to jump in go ahead because I, I don't even I know if totally i totally agree you made a great point and you expressed it very well because i i really i was i know in the depths of my soul i was trying to get there and that's exactly anybody watching this show who hasn't read the books at this point must think that Diana Gabaldon is completely like obsessed with rape and she's not. It, it, it's like Tracy just said, it's, it's never okay, but Fergus is not this sweet and as much of a sweet and innocent little creature in the book as he's a, he's a kid who's been living on the streets, living in a brothel, Seen it all, been through it all, done a lot of it, done done it all, and and he sees it at this point. He's been born and raised in a house of sex, and and sex is nothing to him at this point. It's just whatever, and this is what he was raised with. So he came into puberty and learning about sex and understanding all of this as eh, whatever. You know, and it's France, as they all say. And, you know, and it's the 18th century. <clears throat> right. So you can see how every once in a while, if somebody offered him money, he was like, all right, hurry up. 
You know what I mean? Like, even though he's a kid, he's very mature, a very mature kid. But in the show, he is being portrayed as a very sweet and innocent little soul. Right. And so right, when right. you watch that, you're like, I found it extremely disturbing and I didn't think they needed to go as far as they did. When I saw Tobias, I mean, there was a thrust happening there. I didn't need to see that. I don't think anybody needed to see that. And I, and I hope that it doesn't cause a problem. Like I hope that they don't get a lot of backlash from that because you're, it's one thing to bring Sam and Tobias, you know, bring Jamie Fraser in there as a grown man who said, made it, um, an agreement that leave Claire alone and I will not say no to you and I will take it and I will submit. Mm -hmm. It is quite another thing to show the viewing audience child rape. Right. And I really did not think that that needed to go so far. <clears throat> I liked that they brought it up again in this episode. They didn't just leave us hanging with the coat on the door from last episode. But I think we all knew at that point when he was being dragged across the bed or whatever, mm. cut it off. Mm. When I saw Blackjack, I, none of us needed to see that. And that's all I got to say about that. Um, and I will say that now that I'm thinking about it, there was a good amount of violence in the book too. Um, you know, I mean, like, not like this is a G-rated show, it's not, but, um, you know, I, I don't want to be really explicit about in the book, like what, I, I think I was clear in terms of like, Fer what Fergus expected and what ended up happening. Mm. Um, and, you know, put two and two together. Oh, Tracy, you can go there. I did. Well, no. I was talking about, I was talking about Master Raymond in the book. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. You know what? Maybe there isn't that much difference between what Fergus, goes down in the book and what goes down in the, in the TV show. Fergus expected it to be oral, right. and it ended up being anal. Right. But there was also, I mean, I don't think this is a spoiler because it's this event. I mean, it's the same event in the in the book, but in the book, in the book, there's a lot more violence, and there is some sort of hearkening back to what happened to Jamie, specifically with the branding incident. Um, and that's, that's, Claire finds out what happened basically because she sees, you know, that Fergus has been beat up or clearly abused in some way. And this is another <clears throat> thing that I question, could it be this, when Diana Gavaldon said there's one scene that, you know, they're going to think no, jumps the no, shark. that's because essentially it's out of the book. I just, again, I think I said this last week too, I need to sort of like, ch like, like process all of this because, and think about why it didn't, like, it didn't, it's all, it's Tobias. Tobias has made Blackjack such a fascinating character and such a multi-leveled character and not just a typical, like, you know, mustache twirling bad guy. Right. That for him to have this action that is like 100% awful, horrible, bad guy, you just are not interested in him anymore. Well, you know, I have no, I have, I, I have no sympathy for him. I, I could never imagine anybody else having sympathy for him. I just want him to like, I just want Jamie to like beat the fuck out, sorry, beat the shit out of him and, and you know, toss him off the cliff. Kill him. Yeah. I was sort of there... <coughs> In the books. That's why I got so pissed at Claire. Because I was like, he needs to do this. You need to stand behind him. I don't care what happens to Frank. Mm -hmm. But I have to tell you that in season one, they were all... I remember sitting at the, the 92nd Street Y and listening to them all talk about the difference between Tobias as Frank and Blackjack. And I remember as the season went on and, and thinking, like, he was fantastic. But I guess I just didn't see that major separation that they were talking about about and referring to mm. now imagine Frank from the first episode and now imagine what you just saw. I know. I know. Oh my God. Dear Tobias Menzies, you are a God. Really? I'm telling Love you. Carol. I mean, honest to God, I cannot believe this is the same 
person. This is the same person playing these characters. Mm -hmm. Frank is mind blown. Hashtag, hashtag mind blown. Um, are we bringing back Tobias Tuesday? I, you know, I do Tobias Tuesday every once in a while. I think that once I told Tobias about Tobias, Tuesday, <laughs> I, just, I, I think it's something, the, some of the magic the bloom died. was off the rose. <laughs> some of the magic died as the sparkle, as I watched the sparkle die in his eyes. <laughs> he was right. like, ew. Um, okay. So anyway, all right, we got to move on here. So Jamie comes in, they fight. Okay, this is the best part. So okay, Jamie comes in, he like gets a good a good <laughs> few rounds in. Then some other dudes come in. I guess it's like the bouncers of Madame Elise's. Pull him out of the room. He's like, "Do I want to do? I want to do!" And they leave Fergus alone with Black Jack <laughs> <Red. laughs> under the table. He was under the table. Again. Again. And I'm like. Jamie, um, <laughs> do you think that Blackjack was all like getting up off, you know, getting up off the floor, being like, "So where were we?" <laughs> like slams the door closed. Oh God! Oh, like, I, I'm not going to be able to do this much longer if you're going to make me laugh. <laughs> um, honest to God, not only that, but like, I hate being that person that keeps saying in the book, in the book. But in the book, Jamie's supposed to be like this hulking, massive figure who stands head and shoulders above everybody else. So these guys are pulling him off. I'm just like, Jamie, I'm sorry, but punch them too. Like, finish the job. Like, what? What? Why do we even? Why do we even need a duel? Just nope. freaking kill him. <laughs> you're, you're Jamie Fraser. Kill him. Because then, you know, that, 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 yeah, actually, that's really, hmm, hmm. If Jamie had killed him right there, could he have made a case for the fact that I am protecting this child? Well, in, in, in the 21st century, absolutely. Yes. In the 18th century, In the 18th but, century, I don't know. But, okay, rotting in the Bastille for dueling, you know, what's the penalty for, like, saving a child from rape? Well, in Louis's world, it would have been, like, it is a very, very serious thing that your husband has done. He has killed someone who is an adult for the sake of a child who lives. A child who lives in a brothel, <laughs> and my Catholic upbringing, <laughs> and the king tells me that he has to die. <laughs> Wait till you see the graphic I have made for you. You're gonna die. Oh my God. All right, all right, we've got to move this along. Okay, so Jamie, all right, so the curtain closes on Ferguson Blackjack. We don't know what's going on, but anyway, then Claire goes to Mother's house guard. <laughs> Fergus, Fergus is under the nightstand. That <laughs> Somehow he, and explain to me how after all of that, Fergus made it out with the perfume. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So Claire is asking Mother Hildegard, he's like, well, you know, King Louis, your second cousin wants removed or whatever it is. Yeah, what was, um, is King Louis her second cousin? I don't know. There's some sort of relation there. Because there's not a lot of family uh, <laughs> resemblance. Resemblance. <laughs> resemblance in that family. Okay. So, so Mother Hildegard's like, yeah, you know, you, he might, you'll probably get an audience to him and he might do it, but you know. Yeah, wait, wait, be... you forgot you have found a deep enough sea. <laughs> and um, I'm like, yeah, throw Claire's words back in her face. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have to you have to lie with him basically. Like I mean I, I, Mother Hildegard, just for Mother Hildegard to say you're gonna have to lie with him, you might she might as well just say you do him, you know. Yeah, and Claire's all Okay. <laughs> So she goes we're shocked, to we're shocked that Claire is like with Mother Hildegard and she's like you're gonna have to sleep with him and Claire's like, No no. Like <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what else? 
you know, that's all she has, Carol, is her stims. So, <laughs> throw another one on the pile. <laughs> throw another one on the pile. Um, all right, so we go off to Versailles. Greatest scene Later in the movie. show. Okay, King Louis, start to finish, is just so fabulous. Just so, like, slow golf clap for King Louis. Do you want to know what I was thinking when this scene started and she went into his bedchamber? What? Having read the book and knowing what happens, I'm thinking to myself, oh, let him take that wig off before he does it. <laughs> I know, I know, right? Yeah, I mean, I know. I, I'm so <clears throat> amazing. Just the way he started out so sensual. You know what I mean? With the chocolate and the oranges. He's, you know what? He's the male Miranda Priestley. Don't you think? He's like, you know, he has his, he has his pleasure or whatever. And then he's like, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wasn't wasn't there something in the book where like Claire was just the warm up for like his girlfriend or something? What was what am I thinking? Oh, maybe I think he has a girlfriend or something like that. I don't know, but the booby, big, the booby, the swan dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah, he's so great. One thing to notice if you watch it again, his nails are like buffed to within an inch of their lives, like totally. Yeah, because he has to go like this all the time. Um. So he sits Claire down. He gives her some hot chocolate from New Spain. He gives oh my her God. an orange. When you saw that hot chocolate, weren't you like, I need to get myself to the nearest Godiva store right freaking now. And get some hot chocolate. You know, and, I have. And get Godiva hot chocolate. But downstairs, I have actually one of those Mexican hot chocolate thingies where it's like a brick of chocolate that you're supposed to like, you know, like melt in milk or something like that. Like, and you've never milk. brought this out when I'm at your house. <laughs> Holy crap! Are you kidding me? I know, right? I should. Um, okay, so um, they're talking, and Claire's all like, she would be most grateful if the king would free her husband over oranges and hot chocolate. Who knew hot chocolate and oranges could be so seductive and I know, sensual? I know. So he has her hands, and he's commenting on the rings, whatever. And then he starts kissing her hands. And the look on Katrina Bell's face is so awesome. It's like, oh, God, here it comes. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> and the, Steal and, yourself, girl. And the viewing audience is <laughs> like, here it goes. <laughs> Take the wig off. <laughs> um, so... Oh, she must have had some sort of narration about Louis, because I just have, like, didn't need it. Like... The narrative, like, Lewis is, like, everybody's king. He has, like, all supreme, you know, rule over everything. I yeah, have. Tell me something I didn't know, Claire. You know. I have. He's so full of himself and his thousand trees. Why doesn't he hook up with BPC? No, 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 no. He, oh, no, 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 no. He probably is like this to BPC. Uh, I think, I think there could be just a, just a... <clears throat> Just a one-nighter. Ew. Ew. Carol, mock me. It will never be. Do you know that you guys, my 11-year-old son walks around the house going, mock me, because he's heard me making the videos of five million times of BPC saying mock me. Keep there going. There were no mock me this episode, by the way. It was a mark, it it was, it was a mark me list episode. Mark me free. Um, yeah. Okay. So, okay, so the fact that Louis doesn't even mention the fact that she was pregnant out to here last time he saw her. Did you notice that? Like, last time she saw him. What time is their meeting? I mean, it's been weeks and weeks and weeks, right? And, you know, Louis doesn't think of that stuff. He just takes what he wants. Again, he like, takes he takes what he wants. <laughs> he didn't give a shit. I know, I know, I get that, but I still found it funny as hell. Like, he's, like, so full of himself. She was pregnant out to here last I don't time. I he would remember that. I just think he would remember her hot boobs or something like that. <laughs> um, so, okay. So, he knows that she's a Dame Blanche. And he's like, well, maybe you could, like, do me a little favor. If I'm, I could maybe 
for your husband, but like maybe yeah. you can do me a favor. And Come in my very thing. large walk-in closet. Right. Then they go into like the secret chamber and like walk <laughs> around something and be like, boom. They, they're you know what they were? Narnia. <laughs> Some big, like, you know, other room somewhere. Um, and then he shows up from, uh, but, um, not, but Monsieur Fauré, which is never a good thing. I hate him. I yeah, hate he's him. He's so, like, weaselly and icky. What is, what is the saying with the heat of a thousand suns? I hate him. I know. And Claire was like, you know, ooh, didn't I just see you with my, your hands on my hoo-ha, like, a couple of weeks ago? Were his hands on her? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ew, he's the executioner, and ew. <laughs> um, okay, so Louis, like, makes all sorts of speeches, and, like, dark arts, and we have to, like, you know, get rid of them and stuff, and, like... <laughs> dark arts! <laughs> Turn to page. Turn to page. Did you love that? <laughs> I just want to be able to take my... I just want to be able to take my wand and go... And close the doors and the windows. I know. Carol watches the videos, like, pretty much when you watch the videos, you guys, because um, I, like, edit them. But I put all that stuff in there, and she doesn't really see it. And so then she just watches it clean. And it's fine. Wait, say this again? It's so hitting the wall right now. Like, what are you saying? I'm I saying go you in, watch I'm, the videos with everybody else. I'm the digger. I go in. Tracy gives me a list of what <clears> she needs <throat> from our chit-chat right now. And then I go in and I research and I find it all and I send her these videos and then she has to cut them up, chunk them. Chunk, chunk, chunk. Okay. So in come the Compt and Rain after Raymond. And Who discharge. she called Compt? What? She actually, remember I was saying to you, it's, it's Compt. She referred to him as Compt, just like you're saying it now. I don't know. I don't know. All I know I is. Feel good about yourself. She called him the Compt. Um. You know, <clears throat> so it's the Comte and Master Raymond. They come out. They're on trial. They're being sorted into House Slytherin. Um, and then we get the first instance of the entire season. Once um, Louis is like, yeah, we like need to test them to make sure that they're not witches and like throw them into water. And, you know, if they float, blah, 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 blah. And Claire says... All together now. Jesus, Jesus H. Roosevelt Christ. That was awesome. First awesome. One. Yes, yes, yes. So we got that done. Done. Um, okay. So Claire's like, yeah, all right. You know, I'll test it out. I'll see what I see. And she's looking at the comp like, oh. <laughs> but she's sweating now a little bit, comp. Yeah, but she's um, but, but Master Raymond's all. <coughs> <laughs> this um, is water, by the way. I just want you to know it's water. And that comes. I'm sorry. Even like in stressful times, damn. Tracy, what? I have as my header for the scene. I have backroom antics with the comp and Master Ray, and right under that, I have the comp is looking particularly ravishing this evening. <laughs> Wowie. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I don't know that Faith is the most tragic death on this episode. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to go there and say she is not. <laughs> I was so bumming. Um, all right, but we're skipping ahead. All right, wait, wait, wait. So she says she sees a shadow behind the comp's eyes. Yes. You know, and by the way, doesn't he know anything about the frat boy brigade that, like, has been crawling the streets? And he's like, no, I don't know anything. Ugh. So then he finally starts speaking English, which is really weird, because all this time he's been speaking, like, fuck you French to, um, to Claire and Jamie. But now, now, when, like, everybody in the room speaks French, he's all like, you know, no, I didn't do it. Ugh. Um... I don't even pay attention. Everybody, is there something wrong with me? I don't really notice when they speak French, when they speak English. I notice him because he speaks French all the time. All, even if it's in a room full of people speaking English. If Jer Jamie and Claire are there, he's going to speak French just to annoy them. I felt bad for him. Is that weird? Oh, I did too. Well, all right. So Claire's like, okay, instead of this serpent, which they never, which never leaves the cage... I know. How boring. It's even in the starting. I know. The I know. serpent gets, like, top billing. I know. 
So Claire's like, I have a, I make a potion and we see if it kills them. Okay. And Lou's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? Um, so Claire like gets the bitter cascara because like, you know, just in case you didn't know what bitter cascara was. If like, I never we hear. You, we told you I, a couple episodes ago, listen for that because it's going to be important. If I never again hear bitter cascara in my life, it's okay. Okay. So Raymond gets it first. He gets a little gassy. He's like, oh, 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 oh. But then he like sprays it and stands back up and hands it the ball. And then in the land of Creepalicious, the necklace, I'm not wearing a necklace like that, but the necklace turns. And I gotta say, from there on in, from the look on the cop's face, to the look on, the, on Claire's face, and the exchange the entire rest of the way, riveting. Yes. Riveting. I, you didn't know who to look at. You were like, or is it Steve? No, not Stephen Weber's the wings guy. Um. <laughs> But he was Stanley good Weber. Work. Stanley Weber. I'm sorry I forgot your name, but you are so awesome. You get a fast golf clap. I um, really was upset. He was so great. I have written down hottest death ever. Because, <laughs> because the whole thing of like, he knows what's going to happen. And at first he's like, he's trying to like get out of it. And he realizes there's no way it's done. It is, it's a fate and, and I'll complete, if you will. Don't you think, do you think that he knew, like, don't you think that he knew that Claire didn't expect that either? No, I don't think so. You think he really thought Claire was like, yes. I'm going to kill you now? Yes. yes. I kind of felt like he knew Claire was like. I think he just kind of thought both of them were like complicit in, in whatever was going on. Um, but to Master Raymond, he's more like well played. And to Claire, he's like. You know, see you in hell, bitch. But, like, that whole exchange was so great. It was so, like, his face was just, he'd, like, shock and then laugh and then, you know, like, evil and then finally just, like, bottoms up. It was, it was so great. It was so great. Um, yeah, I staff ever. Um, <clears throat> Oh, all right. Well, what? I also I also have written mon, mon, how do you say it? Monsieur Monsieur Monsieur, Monsieur Ferre is such a judgy douche because <laughs> he's just standing back there, like, like ready to ready to do his thing. I'm ready, and whatever. Why? Here's what I didn't understand. <laughs> and again, I don't remember from the book. So, why did the comp and the and Raymond get caught in the first place? Like, they, they found potions in Raymond's place, and they found them in the comp's place, but who told them to go look? Who? I don't know. I don't even remember. I, you're asking me to remember stuff, but no, I don't even remember. I don't even remember. Um, but anyway, Master Raymond is safe. He's got to get the F out of France or Dodge. And Claire, I love this line of Claire, like, that. this is a narration, this is a narration that I really liked. Um, he, all she could think of was a line from a film. You know the I like that she says that. Like, Why couldn't I, she say the Wizard of Oz? Because he, I guess I'll miss you most of all. I know, but why couldn't she say a line from the Wizard of Oz? No, oh, I liked it way better the way she did it because she's telling us the story. She's telling us the story. And she knows we know it. Like, you know, I love that. I love, 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 like, sort of breaking that fourth wall and acknowledging that she's telling somebody the story. I thought it was fascinating. The whose wall? What? Did you just say breaking that fourth, fourth wall? wall? Yeah. I've never heard that before. You never heard breaking the fourth wall? No. Really? Okay, here's an example of breaking the fourth wall. Where's like the third every other wall? moment of Ferris Bueller's day off. When Ferris Bueller talks to the audience, he's acknowledging that there is an audience. Because the audience is like the fourth wall. What's the third wall? One, two... Three. Oh, oh, the wall right in front of him. 
normally there's a fourth wall when you're watching a play or watching a movie. The characters don't don't acknowledge you. They just like live their lives. But when they do acknowledge you, the Is audience this a theater thing. It's a theater, but it's a movie thing too. Yeah. But when they acknowledge the audience, they break through that wall, and breaking the fourth wall. Okay. I'd like to know how many people watching have heard that before because I've never heard that. Oh, please, totally, totally. I mean, I know of a theater company called Fourth Wall Productions. Like, in the, in the, in the theater. In the theater. It's a big thing. But, yeah, like, I like sure, in the comments, like, say if you've heard of that. And in other news, Carol needs to see more theater. Um. <laughs> you knew it was all going to come down to that. <laughs> okay. Um. So Claire's like, oh my God, oh my God, it's been a long day. I'm just ready to get, get the hell out of here. Like, so, so do we got a deal, Louie? Like, are we good? Are we good? And Louie's like, wow, this is the matter of <laughs> it. Payment. Louie has such jazz hands. <laughs> Speaking of theater. So, okay. <clears throat> so, and then Claire's like, ooh. <laughs> because you know, although I think at that by that point, Louis like like lost a little bit of the shine. You know, he's done. And at this point, I'm thinking, ooh, maybe this is what Diana Galadon was talking about, and Claire's gonna go for it. Now I have to ask you if you notice something in that scene on bed as Twilight viewer. She had her eyes closed. And she was thinking of England. As she told us. Now, something Louie was doing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I have written down here. And I would almost move my computer to, like, show you this part. If you are going to compare that Louie to Edward Cullen, <laughs> you, you need to just think about what you're about to do. Um, okay. This video, by the way, it's, oh my God, this video is going to be like scarily long, but whatever. Um, Louie was doing the leg hitch. Swear to God, go back, go back and look at it. He's oh. got her leg, got her leg like this. I mean, and granted it's like in, under different circumstances, but like, I was, what I've written down here is, oh my God, is Louis doing the leg hitch? Oh, yeah. oh Edward. <laughs> I need to just read every single one of those again. <laughs> okay. All right. Leg hitch. Okay. Moving on. So, oh my God. I love so many little, like, great moments in this episode. And one that I love is afterwards. When they're, they're, it's really awkward, and Louis kind of like, you know, fixing his clothes, and Claire is like this. She gets up, and she goes, with the little leg sausage baloney curl, pushes it back in place. Yeah, she fixes herself, and she takes her orange. <laughs> she takes her orange. Um, and she goes back to get the orange. I, like, I loved it. I loved it. That whole sequence was just so great. It was, it was like awesome. right out of the book. Right out of my head. So great, so great, so great. And so, he's amazing. Okay. We're we're getting we're getting we're in the home stretch, people. Stay with us. Okay. We're back at the ranch. We see from the top of the stairs someone coming up the stairs. Coming up <laughs> the stairs. Coming up the stairs. Coming up the stairs. Then we see Claire and the front shot of Claire with the someone who we're gathering is Jamie. They're back to us. Very, very awkward. Moves in, goes inside. We finally get down to business in terms of a deep moment between the two of them. We see Jamie and. Oh my God! Down, downtown Ginger. <laughs> Downtown has uh, now moved uptown. All I can tell you is it reminded me of the scene in Santa Claus is Coming to Town 
when Chris Pringle has had a few too many cookies and Miss Jessica has fed him a few too many meals and oh no, no I know what it is. He has to before that, when he has to disguise himself from the Burgermeister Meister Burger, so he decides to grow a beard. Gosh. <laughs> Except I think Chris Kringle's beard was a lot better than Jamie's what the curry. At this point, you need to picture Nancy Kerrigan and the word why? <laughs> because honestly, okay. you guys, that was so horrible. That was so like my eyes, my eyes. It was it it that it took like, me right out of the scene. It took me right the f out of the scene. Do you remember the time they did like a funny little parody from like the Downton Abbey house? And I think George Clooney might have been yes, in it. Yeah, and they yeah, was yeah. Like, well, That's what. it was like it was like ah! like like hearing the needle scrape across the record yes. and all of a sudden yes. Sam Hewen yes. is like doing one of those parodies yes. I was yes. like what the what <laughs> and and you know if he didn't I get it we all get it if you know he's in the best deal for a few months of course he's gonna have a beard so Do yeah it was a few months you yeah yeah, I mean, Claire was in the hospital for Well, don't weeks. you think his hair would grow at the same rate as his beard would grow? And let me just tell you this. Survivor goes on for 39 days. I've never seen a beard like that after 39 days of Survivor, ever. I, I, I think that the beard could have been long, but not Grizzly Adams too long. <laughs> And but wouldn't they, again, hang on, hang wouldn't on, the hair on. be proportional? Still talking, still talking. Wait a minute. I haven't made my point yet. I'm, try I'm trying to. <laughs> okay. So if he has this beard, and we all know, yes, 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 he's going to have some facial hair. But, like, this is one of those moments when we can suspend disbelief. Yes, agreed. We, if he walked up those stairs and maybe had some stubble and was dirty... I would have been okay with that. Right, I right. wouldn't have really thought about it until maybe now, when we're sitting here discussing, we might have gone, you know, he probably would have had a longer beard, but whatever. But to have downtown, because <laughs> that's what it looked like. The downtown uptown. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's the best. We first saw that face and that beard. I just went. Laugh right the hell out loud. Ah, I said, it's downtown. <laughs> I know yeah. it's downtown. I know it's downtown. I, I personally, I think that's why they did the flashback. Because Katrina was like trying to get to the scene and would just be like, you know, it was a. What? I'm sorry, people. I can't. I can't do this. And not only that, it wasn't like it was real. Correct? It was a Lee Presson beard. Am I correct? <laughs> Stolen from Linda M. I have to tell you, I stole that line from Linda M. <clears throat> um, so it was just awful. What? Why? Why? I don't know. I mean, that that's like the one. That would keep this episode from being A plus in just an A or an A minus because. And and you're right. His hair didn't, like... His hair didn't grow at all. <laughs> <laughs> it was just this, like... I mean, like... And I'll take so Claire's narration before I'll take the, like, you know, downtown beard. Like, at least, <laughs> like, Claire be like, I realized it had been two months since I'd seen Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, it it had been two months and Jamie had decided to, you know, stop it like Madame Elise's for a shave and a shower. <laughs> Okay, and talk about bearing lead. I really, really, really had a hard time with the chunk of the book that was totally gone from this scene. This didn't happen at their place. This no, no, but you know what? I didn't. I that's a good thing to talk about. One of my favorite scenes in the series 
is when he comes marching along. He got out of jail. She's at Louise's country house. Yeah, she stays at Louise's country house. And he shows up, which you cut me off earlier and told me not to talk about Louise. And then we forgot because to talk about I still have to talk Louise. about Louise. And he, sho- he <laughs> and he shows up and they, they have that conversation. And then they end up up in like the rocks or something. Like, oh. I don't remember the rocks. Do they do it in the rocks? Oh. Hell yes! <laughs> I forgot about that part. No, I didn't. I actually didn't mind the like the change in location. Um, it was fine. It's I get it. Like having to go to Louise's is just too hard. Whatever. Um, What's that when he? That was when they were in the rocks, and it was so incredibly hot that they had to take all their clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 but during that scene for any of you non-book readers who need to go and read those books because some of those scenes are so amazing Jamie's quite a talker during coitus <laughs> <laughs> and and they're in the rocks and he's in her face and she says like his stare his gaze is so intense that like I I had to look away And he's in her face and he's saying to her, never another but me. Say it. Never another but me. I forgot that she had told him about Louie too. And I'm just like, this is one of my all time. And it's, it's interesting because there have been a few lines and I get it. They can't do everything. And, and I always knew there'd be some stuff that I didn't get to see. And it's a bummer. And here, you know, remember I always go back to, you know, can you ride? Yeah, if you take this lassie off my chest and fetch me in clean shirt. I always was bummed out that they didn't say that. But I mean, this to me, for me personally, not everyone, but for me personally, was like missing the sulfur spring. I mean, I love, oh, wow. put it this way, everybody's got their certain scenes they go back to. That's like one of my first, <clears throat> that's top of, them of my list of scenes that I go back to. Never another but me. I mean, and I was like, Oh, so instead we're we're at Jared's place, and he's got downtown, uptown. <laughs> well, clearly she's not going to want to do it like with that. Like, no, hell, <laughs> with with Chris Kringle with a K, <laughs> and then and then she just says like, "Take me home to Scotland," and I'm like. Oh, we're going home already? Okay. Um, I'm ready to get out of France. But wait, because we have to talk about the flashback. Well, they have this conversation. Um, Claire tries to keep a straight face. Um, <laughs> and and did- decides, like, it's too hard. I'm going to just flash back and, to, and talk about, like, what happened when you were gone. And that was a beautiful little scene. And I loved, 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 loved that it was Louise that finally got her out of her... Yes. You know, kind yes. of. I mean, first of all, just like being with the baby and like holding the baby and stuff. I mean, like by that point, you're just sobbing, like you know. Louise, who's pregnant. Louise who's pregnant, but more importantly, Louise, who was sort of portrayed last week as like you know a Real Housewife of Paris, a mean yeah, girl, like flighty, but and, like you can and, tell she was sort of torn. You know, when Claire was all like, "Ugh, you people are just like you know pointless," she's like. Okay, I'll tell you more about the cock. Ah! Yeah, she was flighty, flighty and, and materialistic last <clears throat> week. I and that it, that she was the one who yes. knew what to do, talked her down. Um, it was also a little homage, I thought, to the fact that in the book she does, Claire does recover with Louise and spend a lot of time with her and stuff. Right, right. So... Um, Which can uh, I inter- can I interject something really quick mm-hmm. that has zero to do with this, but it's kind of like they like to show you everything, even if they can't give you that whole scene. So it's sort of like her going to Louise's country house. You know, Louise was like, "Come to the house and and you know recuperate, whatever." Kind of like I can't believe we never talked about Jamie and the horse's rump last week or two weeks ago, when, when was that, with Sandringham, 
you know, Jamie walking from horse rump to horse rump and going, ah, remember the picnic that we didn't get? Remember the picnic when they went and Jamie was all, oh, the fine rump and, you know, and, and, and the women were all like, wow, listen to the way he, remember he was whispering sweet nothings to the horse and the women were all like, like, oh, wow, Claire, like, you know, he's, wow, listen to the way he talks. Don't you remember the way he talked to the horse? You don't remember the Jamie Fraser horse whisperer? Well, I mean, in general I do, but. Oh, this scene was with the picnic and they all went, and I, that was what we never mentioned last week. And I just wanted to make mention of that, that they sort of tried to incorporate that scene in instead the way they did it. It was like at Versailles or whatever, and they just were looking at different horses. Um, so I felt like they were trying to incorporate instead of being at Louise's country house, they did throw Louise a bone and yes, make agreed. her look agreed. like she has a heart and, you know, in her agreed. chest and, and a soul and cares. Yes. I also love throughout the whole, uh, the whole part of with Jamie and Claire that you could hear the ticking clock. Very cool. Very. I was wondering about that. Very yeah. Cool. yeah. Was that her biological clock? Ticking <laughs> like My biological clock is ticking like this. <laughs> um, so, okay. So. Are we done? I think we're done because I'm hitting the wall. No, they're going home. They're going back to Scotland. But there's something that's something they have to do first. That's all we know? Oh, oh, oh. I, and I, I don't think that's in the book at all because I don't think, I don't know that they ever go to see her, the grave. I think together. they did. I don't. I think they did. I think she took him. The only reason I think that they don't, well, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say. And okay. we don't, I don't think we talk, need to talk about any spoilers at the end of this because there's really nothing. This was very, in general, this episode was a lot like the book or at least it had the spirit of the book. About oh, that. God. I really think it did. Amazing, um, amazing, amazing episode. I would say that they did not go together, but that, but, you know, that maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Um, you didn't even remember Jamie whispering to the horse as well. <laughs> I don't think they do, though. And there's a reason I thought, think that, but I won't. I can't that. believe you haven't mentioned the line. I almost fell off the couch when Claire said, without darkness, there can be no light. And all I could think of was Tom saying, Without hate, there can be no love. <laughs> that was in our video. I was like, yes! Um, okay, so they leave a spoon. I don't know what apostle it is, but... Again, again, talk about taking you out of the moment. I'm like, you can't leave the spoon. Jenny's going to wig out. I don't know. Jenny's going to be mad. It's like, dude, there's 12 of them. They're apostle spoons. Now you just have yeah. 11. Yeah, you no replacements.com that you can just order a new apostle spoon. Oh my god, like, right? Can't you, like, God bless Faith, but leave her something else. <laughs> I know, right? right. Um, and then they sort of, like, have a wider shot, and you see the final statue of the Madonna again, sort of, like, looking over them. And that's it. That episode was so well-crafted. Such great symbolism. Like, it, it really was. It harkened back to the best episodes of season one. Bravo to all. Um, but Katrina, this was your... I think I think Sam had a really good week last week. But this was Katrina's week all the way. Like, Emmy episode stamped on the, you know, screener DVD that goes to... Oh, this. my God. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that's it. So where do we go from here? That's all she wrote. We're, we're officially halfway through the, the season. Mm -hmm. um, I we're very remember. lucky that the season is continuing because <clears throat> I can't believe they didn't stop it here and make us wait eight months for the next segment. Um, I don't know what's going to happen um, next week. That Again, with this whole jumping the shark thing, it could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. It's I think it means... Well, I, I don't know. I'm too tired to, like, really delve into that conversation, oh. although I kind of want to. Oh, I'm starting to now wonder if it's, hmm. Mm. Okay. Or, I can't believe we have that much left, because in my mind, I'm like, 
I only really remember this, this, and this. Like, no, there's more. There's definitely there's a lot more laughs. There's a lot. More. Um, yeah, because now I'm thinking, okay, this happened, this happened. All right, that's it. So we will see you next week. Um, as always, you can follow <laughs> us on myunderpurgatory.com. You can uh, like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. You can follow us on Instagram. You can see us on Monday, May 23rd on Hangout Lander. Courtesy of That's Normal. Um, where else can we be found? Did you say Instagram? We've started to do that a yes. lot. Snapchat if we ever do it. We really should do Snapchat. I'm trying to think where else. We have oh we have a Periscope, but we never we we hardly ever Periscope. We should really do it. I think we did Periscope at the last premiere. For a little bit. Oh we did, we did, we did. Because I remember somebody saying, like, what what is the point? <laughs> no, we actually we did a bunch of periscopes. We did a bunch bunch of periscopes. Um I we used to have a Tumblr. I don't even know if we do it anymore. I don't know why. Like I just did it just to have one, but um, and that's it. So before I fall asleep, <laughs> oh my we, god! I know I'm exhausted. Oh my Holy god! Holy cow! It's late. Sorry, it's so long, but you know, lots to say. All right, you guys. We will see you next week. Have a great week, and see you later. Bye.